Dexter season four review. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to do a little review on Dexter season four. Now, a lot of people would say that this was one of the best seasons of Dexter. I think a lot of people would actually, or most people would actually put this as number one season of Dexter. Before rewatching these seasons, I would have said one, two, and four. Seasons one, two, and four of Dexter were near perfect. Absolutely loved them. Really didn't like too many other seasons besides one, two, and four. However, on rewatch, a lot of my opinions have changed quite a bit. And to be honest, guys, I hate to say it, but I'm not as impressed with this season as I thought I was going to be or as I was the first time that I watched it. So season four of Dexter is basically like Dexter being like a house husband. He get They get a new house. Harrison is born. Uh, they do a lot of the family dynamics, like almost drowning you in it in the first half of this, where it's just like, all you see is just Dexter being a dad versus almost anything else. So that's a big part of this. And then obviously John Lithgow as the Trinity Killer and basically all the stuff revolving around the Trinity Killer. Real quick, I'm going to be getting into some spoilers in this review, just letting you guys know. I recommend that you at least try Dexter out. If you don't like it, then come back to this review. But I'm going to be very spoiler heavy in here just to give my opinion. So John Lithgow as the Trinity Killer, just absolutely probably one of the reasons that people rate this one so high. London Lundy comes back to see Deb. Lundy has the Trinity killer case. Trinity kills Lundy and then Dexter finds out about it. Dexter ends up finding the Trinity killer about halfway through the season and basically wants to learn about how the Trinity killer is able to keep a family because Dexter just has a family of his own. Let's jump into the pros that I had with Dexter season four. The pros is that it's a really good Dexter formula. Like most of what I think of with Dexter is in this season. There's nothing that glaringly bad about what I want from Dexter. It seems to generally fire on all cylinders like I would want a Dexter season two. Okay, so two characters I thought they used really well here were Christine, the girl who dates Quinn and ends up being the daughter of the Trinity Killer, and then also Lundy. Now, what I liked about both of these were they, they fit their role perfectly. I really liked the chemistry between Quinn and Christine. I thought it was just probably one of the top five best chemistries that I've seen uh, on Dexter. Really, really like their chemistry. And then on top of that, the way that she fits into the story being the Trinity Killer's daughter, I feel like that was a great twist. It gives you something that you never expected, like you were introduced to this character and there's so many throwaway characters that they don't really use for anything, but they really use Christine well perfectly there. And then another good one was Lundy. Lundy I'm kind of mixed on because he just seems like he's somebody who I wouldn't want to see constantly in Dexter. I wouldn't want him to marry Deb. I wouldn't want him to be in every season, but I really, really like him. I really, really like when they use him correctly. And he's probably the best used character in the entire show, in my opinion. Lundy comes back to kind of finish up the thing with Deb. So now we kind of get a little bit of closure between their storylines. Deb was kind of mixed on Anton. So now this kind of makes it so, okay, Deb for sure likes Lundy more. So let's just get Anton out of here. Don't waste his time great way to mix those two. And then having Lundy have the Trinity killer case, like, and basically that's the reason that Dexter knows about it. I thought that was brilliant. And then having him killed, I just was blown away how they used him so perfectly. And again, I liked him. I wanted to see a little bit, but I didn't want him to stay along for a long time. And they did it. They did everything right that I'd want to see. On top of that, they gave a crazy episode ending when Lundy dies and Deb's right next to him. Like that was just great, great TV. And I think the utilization of Christine and Lundy were some of the strongest pros of this season, in my opinion. Another pro is the Trinity Killer. He's a really well thought out killer. He's got a good story. There's a lot of things that I like about it. There's a few things that I don't like. I'm going to get into the mix and the cons, but overall the idea of the Trinity Killer and just, it was just a really well thought out season. And I liked the idea of the Trinity Killer. Um, Angel and La Guerta getting together. Now, I don't think they're the best mix I've ever seen ever, but at the 
same time, I really enjoyed this storyline between them. It was a nice story arc. You liked both characters. You want to see them be together. I just felt like this was a really, really good story arc because you have to have something new for both characters and it's something we want to see two people coming together. I really liked those storylines. And then also my other pro is that you had peak vibes at Miami Metro. Everything seemed to be just, you know, besides no dokes, everything seems to be flying on all cylinders. There's nothing really like, ah, oh, it's just awkward or that's not funny or that was a missed opportunity. As far as everything in Miami Metro, I feel like it hits good. Okay, mixed. Um, the mixed aspects I had with this season were some mixed opportunities some mixed aspects I had this season were the missed opportunities with Rita. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I felt like the first season was probably one of the better ones with Rita because they're, they're still filling each other out. She's still traumatized. It gives us a nice story arc to go. Um, season two, it was more of like Dexter and Rita are on the, fr on the fence or on Dexter and Rita are kind of fighting. You don't know if they're going to be together at the very end. They get together. I felt like seasons three and four of Dexter, there's really not much of anything that Rita does. Rita is essentially the kind of like the icing on the cake for Dexter. It's uh, a family to take care of. It's just this, just this extra thing to go home to, this extra thing to fight for. And there really just wasn't very many storylines with Rita. Rita never never knows anything about Dexter. Rita doesn't know that he's a killer. Rita doesn't know freaking anything about him. We're talking about four seasons, you know? And so it was really interesting when you're getting to the end of season four, you see like uh, the jealous neighbor who's getting with Rita. You could have had almost a full season of story arc with that, you know, that he's getting with Rita, there's there's a whole fighting, Dexter and stuff like, you know, that you could have done so, so much with that. And then you could have done so, so much with Rita understanding that Dexter's a killer. You know, that that was not even explored, not even for like five minutes, not even like, oh, Dexter's a killer and we get five minutes of Rita reacting before she dies. No, for four seasons, that's like one of the best things you could have done because Dexter can't be himself in front of her. He doesn't trust her enough. And so many people end up figuring out Dexter, but she never does. And it's just like, man, you know? And then on top of that, when Dexter goes and punches the guy for kissing Rita, it almost felt like, like, why would you put that in the story if you're just gonna kill Rita? It feels like you're trying to build more we can do with Rita and then you just throw it away. So I felt like there was so much more they could have done and I'm not even trying to be mean, but just for the sake of story, if Rita's kids, the non-Harrison, if Aster and Cody, one of them had died or both of them were died, that would have been an extremely hard pill to swallow. It would have been such a big loss. And in my opinion, they could have done more with it because you still have Rita alive and Rita is less of this just like housewife random person. Maybe that would be a reason to where Dexter and Rita kind of you know, bond now because Rita's so broken and now and now she sees Dexter. So there was just so much they could have done with Rita. And I noticed at the end of this season, I'm like, man, they could have done so much stuff and then they just throw it away. So I'm just sad about the missed opportunities of what they could have done in seasons three and four. Now to get on to the cons of this season. The cons was that it had several slow episodes. Now again, I'm gonna say this in almost every season of Dexter. I think they should be 10 episodes, 12 episodes. It's just a little too long. We're talking about 10 hours of TV is enough. We don't need to push it to 12. So for this season specifically, I started out bored because we're doing the whole Dexter Dexter makes a mistake for a whole episode. Dexter's like a failure. Dexter doesn't know how to be a hot, hot, like a husband kind of thing. And then it starts to get good. You know, Lundy's comes back, Lundy gets killed, the Trinity killer is introduced, and then it gets boring again. Right after Lundy dies, it starts to get really boring, at least for me. He's just trying to basically do stuff with Arthur for like four or five episodes, and it was just, uh, I just got really bored. So I was bored, interested, bored, interested. So. It's weird how it works, but that's how I felt this season. The One of the main cons that I had with this season, especially on rewatch, was how many times the Trinity Killer's death is juggled. Like, it makes Dexter just seem like the biggest idiot because there was so many times he could have saved Rita. So many times if he would have just not done something, Rita would have been fine, but he literally just messes everything up. And it's so hard because of how many times the Trinity killer could have been gotten. Dexter steals Lundy's books. So like they can't really learn anything about the Trinity killer. He knows something that's going on with, but he doesn't want to tell Deb because he wants to get the Trinity killer by himself. He starts a whole fake investigation, plants evidence so that everyone thinks the Trinity killer is somebody else so that 
he can have enough time to go get Trinity on his own. Then one time he goes with Arthur and he's planning to kill him. It's like four or five in the morning. He goes to kill him. He can't find him. He goes and finds him about to jump off. So literally if Dexter was at this place at five in the morning, if he was 30 seconds late, this guy was already dead. If Dexter had just gone to sleep, this guy would have freaking killed himself. When he first finds him, it's only like episode five or six, and right there he decides not to kill him. And then he has a chance to get him, and he gets in a fight with a cop. And because of that, he ends up getting away. Then on top of that, the Trinity Killer gives him an ultimatum. Just leave me alone, and I'll leave you alone. He gets all of his money. Why would somebody get all their money in their assets? Because they're leaving town for good. This guy's like 60 or 70. He's super old. He's leaving town. He's not coming back. He's going to die pretty soon. Obviously, we want the closure, but it's just like all this stuff would have ended up with Rita still being alive, but just Dexter had to mess everything up, and it was just so hard to rewatch how many times they just juggled this guy's death in front of you. And then the generic family interactions. Now, I felt like seasons three and four of Dexter, and I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to explore a new side to Dexter. Dexter hasn't been a family man. Now Dexter is. So let's just show all the the stuff you have to do as a family man. I felt like that was just a little too much in, in this season and in season three. And it's even with Arthur's family, that was kind of interesting, but I just felt like there was probably four or five solid episodes where the majority of the episode is just basic family stuff. And like when I'm watching a Dexter episode, I'm not looking for a house husband, I'm looking for Dexter. And then the last thing, and I know this, I'm probably on island with this one, I love John Lithgow as an actor, absolutely love him, I think he's great, but I just could not believe that this guy kills people. I'm sorry, like yeah, it opens up with him doing the bathtub kill, you do see him get in bed with his wife and it looks all scary and stuff, but I just don't buy that this guy's a killer. Like he looks really fat. He looks like a jolly bald guy. I just don't see him doing anything. As far as him doing kills and stuff, I think the most you see him is on like a camera from behind. Like when I see Dokes, I think Dokes could kill somebody. When I see the ice truck killer, I think the ice truck killer could kill somebody. When I saw Miguel Prado, I think Miguel Prado would actually kill somebody. But when I see John Lithgow, I'm like, I needed more scenes, I guess, with him in the driver's seat. Cause he is crazy, he is a good actor, but most of the scenes is just him doing generic stuff, playing with the train with the kid or going to get some money, you know what I mean? So I just was hard for me to buy John Lithgow as the killer. So anyways, guys, this is a pretty solid season of Dexter, obviously in the top three for me. To be honest, guys, it might even be number three. I would have thought this was gonna be number one, if not number two. It might end up being number three, but this is one of the better seasons of Dexter. It is really good. I think most people are gonna put it as number one, and I would totally see why. Again, the best parts of this season for me was the utilization of Christine and Lundy. There is their own kind of twists within their story that I absolutely love and I love how they fit into the story so well too. So anyways guys if I was going to rate this season I'd probably give it an 8.5 out of 10. Really really enjoyed it. Very solid season of Dexter and very little things that I, I didn't like about it but overall one of the best. What did you think? What's your favorite season of Dexter? I can't wait to finish all these so I can do a big review of all of them including the new New Blood. So anyways guys we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and I couldn't do it without any of you guys. Hope you guys are the best. I'm having a great out here hopefully having a great day at home see you on the next video peace